you doing? It's Jim. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the channel if it's your first time here. We are listening to music. <laughs> of course we're listening to music. This is Mogwai. This is an album called Come On, Die Young. It's the second album that we've had from Mogwai on the channel. The first was about 18 months ago, a long, long, long time ago. Um, young team. And... It's been ages. It really has, and there's been there's been murmurings and comments and uh, and general sort of uh, grumblings that we haven't done any more uh, Mogwai. So I, I always intended to. Um, it's never a thing that I wasn't going to. It's just I, I haven't got around to doing it. You know, there's just so much music. Um, this is the first time though that we've had Mogwai on LP. On an album. The last one was on a CD. I think it was maybe one of the first CD listen throughs we did on the channel rather than an album. But anyway, this is uh, Mogwai's second album. It came out in, well, this says 2022, but that's because it's a repress. Let's have a quick, sorry about this. I really should be getting myself in order, shouldn't I, before we do all this stuff? Um, uh, bum, bum. Mogwai, come on, die young. 29th of March, 1999. Genres, post-rock, indie rock, instrumental rock, noise rock, space rock, air experiment... Ex <laughs> experimental rock is what I meant to say there. It's uh, the second studio album by Scottish post-rock band Mogwai. The album was released 29th of March, 1999. We know that. Chemical Underground was the label. Songs on the album were written by the band at home altogether in the rehearsal room. They wanted a sparser sound. Than the previous album, Mogwai drew influences from 17 Seconds by The Cure, Spiderland by Slint, as well as Low, Nick Drake, and The Four Carnation. I don't know any of that stuff. I know Nick Drake. I think the best thing is just to get on and listen to some music. I haven't actually told you what the songs are. Side one. Punk rock. Cody. Helps both ways. Year 2000. Non-compliant. Cardia. So four tracks. the first track over already? Might be. In which case that means that this is now Cody.
This is almost a really old school, um, end of the 60s stereo recording because it's got all the drums to the left, all the vocals to the right, and everything else straight down the middle. Reminds me a little bit of the Jesus and Mary shake. not heard, uh, well maybe I have heard Mogwai do this, but I don't think I have, this is really melodic. Almost like whispering the vocals. It's really sort of almost singing under your breath, isn't it? It's quite effective. Clive's got open field. Clive across the 40. 
I like that drum sound. But it's got um, a really dry kit, but mixed in with a sub bass. There. Ooh. This is. Um, Helps both ways, I think. waiting for the massive crescendo um, this seemed to be almost like formulaic almost every song on that first album had a very very quiet bit and then suddenly exploded these haven't done that maybe they won't maybe it's a different they've gone in a different direction for this album I think this is a a much more organic sounding Say something else, Jim. <laughs> organic sounding stripped back. 
music. Sorry, I, just, I was in a in a in a, in a moment there. <laughs> um, oh. Right, final track of the side. This is Year 2000, non-compliant, Cardia. Finding their noise. This is a far more stripped back uh, version of Mogwai than the one that I know from the first album. Um, it it does sound, as I said, it's almost um, not almost. It does. It sounds more organic. It's more um, just stripped, stripped back, chilled out, um, quieter. No, it, it is quiet, but I don't think it's. It feels quite. It feels less chaotic. Um, I like it. I like it. The drums sound is very, very natural, incredibly natural, and I'm sure there is processing going on there, but it's going in the complete opposite direction from the uh eqing uh compressing and processing that you'd normally find on a drum track of a of a hard rock or metal piece of music where it's really punchy this is the drums are ringing there's the sound is just natural it's it's really nice a really nice um and the vocals i i don't remember if there were vocals on that first album it, do, it doesn't strike me. Maybe there were, but I, I can't. I can't recall them at the minute. But um, it had a feeling to me, a little bit of um, the Jesus and Mary chain. Uh, and I think had it had layers of feedback and lots more reverb on there, 
it would have almost been indistinguishable from a Jesus and Mary train track. But um, yeah, it's this is really cool. I'm, this is excellent. This is very very different from what I was expecting. Um, I was expecting the huge crescendos, the starting off quiet and suddenly exploding into noise, um, and then bringing it back down again, and then probably bringing it back up again towards the end, which was the way almost every song, I think, went on that first album. And it hasn't done it once yet. So I think they've said, OK, we've done that. We need to go to explore and do slightly other things, different things more interesting things interesting things to us with this album maybe I mean we're only one side in we've got three more to go so who knows what's going to happen on the next three sides but uh, no, this is really good really interesting so yeah um, as 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 you know we listen to loads of different sorts of music on the channel and this is a case in point um, post rock experimental noise uh, love it I hope to see you on the next video whenever and whatever that is. Until then, this is Jim. Over and out.